Welcome, my gentle humans. Howdy. Welcome back. My name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze, and welcome to my painter's chore coat. Welcome to my giant velvet chair. It's not really for my evil twin. It's more my reading nook and we have a lot of stuff framed out here. I'm trying to figure out like different spots that I can film inside my house for this slow gaze -a This is the second video. I kind of think of it as the first. My first, first video, video zero, was me just kicking off this marathon, the 25 days of uploading. I've never done an everyday challenge like this before. I've also never participated in the vlogmas time frame. I figured that if I could do everyday posts December 1st through December 25th then I could take a break from then until New Year's and then resume my usual Wednesdays posting schedule after that. So today I wanted to put my face down with you and show you what I was using on my road trip that I had mentioned in a couple videos prior. I was on a road trip with my mom for two weeks. Unintentionally it was a capsule makeup bag. Now this is my everyday makeup bag. I actually have something that's double tiered. Um, I have so much more makeup than just this but I find that this holds my skincare, my hair care. So this is my vessel. It is by The Daily Edited. I love it. It's saffiano leather and it's double tiered, like I mentioned. It does have enough pockets for me to feel really organized in. It's a little grody. Um, and then I put mostly my brushes up here and then the mother load lives down here. Now there's nothing in here. I've sort of set it down onto the table in front of me. So I'll, as I use the stuff, I'll put it back in here and you'll be able to see how much this fits. Maybe we'll do that. Now my skin is looking a little dewy and fresh already. It's because I have my The Ordinary Rosehip Oil cold pressed oil already on. I slather this on only once a day. Um, I try to do it ju just at night, but sometimes I wash my face in the morning with more than just cold water. And when I do, and I take off sort of some of the oils on my face, I do add a, a drop or two back in, especially when I was out in Las Vegas. That's where I ended up for my road trip. It was so dry, like hella dry. My body was freaking out and um, I didn't want my face to turn into a rhinoceros. I could feel like really dry rough patches, almost calluses forming on a top layer on my cheeks. And so this really saved me. Uh, I love that this is a single ingredient piece of my skincare. It's not like multi-ingredients, peptides, everything. Also for the price point, I've really been going through this bottle. So I have that on my face already as with this La Roche-Posay 50 SPF mineral sunscreen. I recently finished my Clinique as well, and I like this way more. I found after using that, which gave me a total white cast, comparing it to this, this really sinks in. I know my skin is sort of light medium and, you know, a white cast doesn't necessarily show up as much, but it still is detectable. And I've been using this De Bronzy Drunk Elephant anti-pollution drops um, to balance that white cast out. With this though, I don't feel like I need the debronzy drops. I'll show you what these look like though. I always find this such a fascinating and confusing product. I literally put a pump and a bit of it splattered out. So I'm gonna just put this, I think of it as like chocolate frosting all over my face. And because I'm not using a mirror right now, I'm sort of looking off to the side because that's where my View is a view of myself, my mimetic self. So you can tell that it doesn't give me an orange cast. It just gives that nice, subtle bronze look that helps to switch my complexion from like a flat, chalky canvas to something that has a little bit more life. It brings back the dimension in my face and it still matches my neck. I don't think it's been too, you know, it doesn't change my complexion 
all that much. You can tell there's a slight difference, um, but once I put more makeup on, it just all kind of evens out. So this is a nice step. I'm trying to downsize the amount of steps that I have for my everyday makeup. Um, so I'm glad to have found a sunscreen that doesn't require like color correction. Also, one of my viewers so kindly recommended to me since I did a video on my everyday makeup, not enough sunscreen and I wasn't layering it. I was mixing products uh, all together on the back of my hand or on my face, um, but really instead of diluting things and letting the sunscreen go on patchy, I should actually just do a full spread of sunscreen, then layer on whatever I was mixing in. Duly noted, thank you for that tip. What I like about this slow gaze-a-thon vlogmas timeframe is that my videos have to be a lot more casual. I can't spend the usual three to four hours editing. I have to cut it down to half an hour to an hour. So you're gonna get a real slice of life here. Now I'm going in with my RMS Beauty. This is the Master Radiance Base and I just actually bought this product. This is something that I'm hoping and I think it is quickly replacing I was hoping it would replace my Chanel Le Beige Pearly Glow, which was a primer and kind of this really liquidy fluid base that did exactly the same thing as what I think this radiance base will do for me. I'm just putting it on the high points, but you could spread this out all over and basically just massaging that in very lightly with the lightest touch. Um, I wanted to dab it onto my face so that you could see how much I was actually using. Up and down my nose a little bit. Work it up into my brows. I don't mind if it goes over my brow hairs, but then I get that part highlighted. My cheeks are highlighted and whatever is left on my fingers goes over my lips. I can't believe this product. I literally am so impressed by this. I was very scared and very skeptical because this pot looks very glimmery. It looks almost like an eyeshadow. I was worried that it was gonna get frosty. I was worried that there were gonna be too large of a fleck in there and I'm gonna be just Sparkle City. Holy molars, when I put it on, it just, it's giving me that radiance. It's giving me that smoothness. And let me just go in and put a little bit on the back of my hand. So welcome to my hand. I have just, enough radiance on there to look great from afar. And when I'm close up as well, I really can't detect any glitter or sparkle. So the rest of this is just kind of going on to the high points of my cheeks. Ah, I love it. I love that it's moisturizing. There's meadow foam oil. There's a lot of other um, really nourishing and moisturizing ingredients here. So I'm tapping that in, making it kind of settle in, melt down, and it just feels like I'm giving myself more skincare. So I'm very excited to have found this. Why I wanted to move into RMS Beauty instead of using the Chanel Le Beige, even though I'm still planning to use that up, is because this also has no fragrance to it. The other one is kind of a perfect holy grail if you don't mind putting heavy fragrance on your face every day. Um, so I would highly recommend that. And let me know if you wanna see a video on primers or luminizing primers glowy bases because I have a few thoughts on an Ilia one, this RMS one, and that Chanel Le Beige one. This just feels like a really good clean alternative, non-toxic alternative. This trip again was all about being with my mom, helping her out, and I didn't want to look too done up, but I wanted those desert vibes since I was going out westward. So I'm picking up my Kosas Light bronzer, a peachy dream, and I have to pick it up with this brush. Now I had brought my Makeup Forever professional stippling brush with me, and this served me really well, but it looks like a wet chicken because it's gotten so oily with all the oils and moisturizing bases I put on my face. This was picking it up and giving this bronzer here a real hard pan every time I used it. My Morphe M527 with this really stiff bristle brush was helpful, grabbing quite a bit of product, not even bothering to tap it off because I found that I love how smoothing this is. And I'm really kind of buffing in. I have an initial review of this product on my channel and I'll link it down below, but it was 
being used by me as sort of a warmth and as a, a bronzer. So I was putting it kind of in this area and around the borders of my face, but I found since it's so peachy, I wanted to use this as a blush. And the moment I made that switch, this product made so much more sense for me, especially in this light color. Putting it over my eyelids, but in a horizontal sweeping motion. I like connecting my peachy blush up into basically the corner of my eyes and then going over my eyes. I found that going over the bridge of my nose is nice, but so is going along the sides of my nose because my nose shape on the forehead and then on the chin and downwards. Uncover up concealer. That is in the shade 22 and I like it a lot, but after perfecting the smoothness of my face, I found that I don't really need that much color cover up the dab just a little bit taking a moment to just show you what my complexion is looking like and i'm just really loving this kosas light bronzer it's been really fun having this daily ritual to focus on and to bring back a little bit of appreciation for the things i have and use them regularly without having all the options laid out for me. I've been so excited to use these products. So, so, so excited every day to wake up and put my face on, which is mind boggling. So next I'm going in with this Lawless Bronzer. I think this is a perfect dupe for me for the Private Island by Fenty. I am trying to move my collection to a more clean beauty space. Picking it up with the same brush, just really dabbing it on. This is beautiful and I will do reviews on these products again this is just showing you my kit and i'm just sweeping upwards really lightly tapping and then sweeping upwards to intensify that lifted look and that bronziness but kind of focusing it almost like it, it were a blush and then taking just the tip and running it along the sides of my nose. I'm really enjoying this. It's not as matte as the Fenty bronzer. It is a little bit more red toned, but still very yellow, which is perfect for my complexion. And then this is also getting the eyelid treatment to just connect everything. Ah, I just feel like I could go out and feel really casual and, and just glowy. This is in golden hour. Um, it has what it looks like a very square kind of post-it note size box with the rose gold here but then when you flip it over it does have that jeweled effect almost it was a really nice touch on their part the packaging is also like a soft touch um, and it has a slight iridescence to it so it's not quite like your mario um, makeup launch a little bit more edge and a little bit more femininity i'm going in next with my westman atelier Peau de Peche, and this is a super loaded highlight. Talked about this in my everyday makeup kit, but I really wanted to show this as much as I could, not because it's 75 effing dollars, but because it is really a special piece. I know it's just pigments, and why would I ever spend that much money on something like this? In this view, you can see that it's silver. It's almost like a gray silver. In this view, it's pink and almost tawny brown. And it just has this really special silvery reflect on the top and it shifts and it gives you that that dimension on your cheeks. So yes, these are a little bit harder to open. They're a bit too small and a bit too heavy for me. She kind of missed the boat on that aspect. Yes, it's a beautiful object to hold. The way you open it, there's like this tiny lip and it's so hard to get purchase on just this bottom half. You can see that my fingers are already kind of dwarfing that bottom lip. Can't use just one hand. I have to use both my thumbs, open it like a clamshell, but once you do, like it's fine. Uh, the mirror is inset. I wish this mirror was just a bit bigger. That post-it note size that the Lawless bronzer had was perfect. So I'm really just not picking up too, too much. Um, that's what it looks like on the finger and then on the back of my hand. Again, like hand swatches are useful sometimes, but it just doesn't show what things look like on the face. Only because your face has so many more different textures. The light hits it in a different way. You have really thin skin, thicker skin, cartilage compared to the back of your hand. It's just kind of melting in and it's giving me such a natural highlight. At least it looks natural to me. It's smoothing everything out. It's giving me both that 
depth and dimension and that pinky color. I just love this stuff. It looks very different from what to expect in the pan. It smells slightly of coconut, very slightly of coconut. Would I buy this again? If you ask me today, I would say yes. Yes, 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 10 times over, yes. If I had to just choose one product from my face base today and run out the door after putting sunscreen on, I would choose this. I've just been lumping it all into the bottom here. Nothing quite on the top yet. Put the brush I was using up top, but what I've got left here for today, eyes, brows, and lips. So for brows, I've just been going in with a brow gel. I could not be bothered every single day to go in with pencils, pomades, or anything that I would have to start drawing in. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's an ashy brown. It's in the shade medium brown, but it's already cool toned enough for me to feel like this is a really natural look. For lips, I've been going in with this Lisa Aldridge Velvet Fawn. This gives the most perfect velvety finish and it helps me define my lips in the center here. Love this stuff. It gets even better as I wear it throughout the day. Blur those edges. Oh, it just brings out the peachiness in my cheeks. A recent purchase is this Tower 28 Oat. I tried two of their shades prior to the launch of their more opaque, creamy looking, milky glosses, and I didn't love those as much, but somehow this one is getting me. It's a little bit peachier. It's not so ballet slipper pink. It does have that that, like youthful warmth to it and it's just a great sidekick to that Lisa Aldridge. Very nourishing. I do find if I put this gloss on and then wipe it off after an hour or so and then put on a lipstick on top, my lips are really plump and they keep that moisture. And then finally a little bit of shine. This is Ilia in Sheen, the warmer sister of Fresco, which I think is one of their more better selling pieces. Now before I put this on my eyes, I was going to mention that this is what I was hoping for from the Glossier Lid Stars. I do really love that product, but of course this is clean beauty. It's just a heftier product. It's a heftier bottle. It doesn't feel so like Barbie. And now that I'm 30, it just feels a lot more like appropriate for my kit. These things dry down like no other. It truly becomes a powder powder and I have to work very quickly. So I found, um, Previously, when I tried it the first time, or the first few times, I was literally using the doe foot to draw on almost like an eyeliner on top. It would deposit way too much product and it would get caught in my eyelashes, chunk up and dry up in my lashes. So I would have to like go in after and kind of crumble it out of my lashes afterwards. As you can see in my kit, I don't have mascara. The juice isn't worth the squeeze because my lashes are so faint, lids are hooded. So even if I put on mascara and curl my lashes, the effect is not that like astounding wow flutter that I would hope for. So I've just been amping up the features I already have that I really like um, and just giving my skin that perfect finish that I want, just enough color and my lips to have just that juiciness, um, my brows to be you know in their natural state but also a little bit more uh, tailored. And same with my eyes. I just want a little bit of depth around my eyes um, to feel bronzed and kind of sultry but I don't want it to look overly feminine. I don't want it to look overly done. So with this, dot a few dots over my eyelids and I'll show you all that, but I don't want to talk whilst I'm doing it. So I'm sort of prepping you with uh, what I'm about to do. So triple dot situation, triple dot situation. And then I run it down. I don't even turn the doe foot over with a finger and smudge it out. I have to work so fast. And then once it's there, it doesn't budge. Altogether, I think this is kind of my glowy boss girl look. And this is it. I've been really inspired by just going out into nature and feeling like I'm embracing my natural beauty, but also giving more effect to my complexion, focusing more on the overall finish of my looks, and not focusing so much on eye colors, eye shapes, or changing anything. It helps illuminate what I want for my makeup in the future. What can I let 
fall away and what should I focus on? Like that's kind of my mindset going into 2021. This is it for this video. I really hoped you enjoyed your stay with me here at Slow Gaze. This is the place and the channel for slowing down, gazing inwards or gazing at yourself with a more thoughtful lens um, and just finding your own path through all of this chaos, all of this noise. Um, connect with me on Instagram, I'm at slowgaze. Connect with me down below, I read every single comment. And thank you so much for coming here. I'm seeing a lot more new faces here. I just reached about 1.7 thousand subscribers, which blows my mind. It really humbles me because I think that I'm just always floating out in the world. And um, you have shown me that there's more love and ca compassion to share than I ever imagined. So thank you so much for all your love and support. I'm radiating it back at you from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Take care everyone and I'll see you on the next video tomorrow. Adios. You got me upside down Should only feel this much